Questions like this always stump GCSE students. How do we address it? It just uh, comes down to our understanding of our index rules, okay? So, let's start off with an easier problem, which is still a tricky problem. We're finding the unknown base this time. We've been practicing a lot of, you have something like 16, and you do to the power of minus two thirds, maybe not 16, maybe 27 to the power of minus two thirds, and understanding what a fractional power does to the number. Here, we need to understand what the fractional power does to this number, but then do the opposite to be able to find it. I mean, finding the unknown base is something you guys are very used to. If I give you something like this, everybody should know what you're doing. You're square rooting to give you plus or minus four. Because it comes from your understanding that that two means you're squaring the number. So we need to root to do the opposite of that. And you'd say x is plus or minus four. And the reason you're getting two solutions is because the quadratic looks like this. Here is y is 16. You get two solutions of four and minus four. How does it work here? Again, it stems from our understanding of what the power means and then doing the opposite. Okay, power minus two thirds. The two means to square the number. The three means to cube root. Remember the denominator tells you which root you're taking. The minus is reciprocate. Remember J. Cole flipping like reciprocals. It flips the number. We're gonna do the opposite step by step. What's the opposite of squaring a number? Square rooting a number? What's the opposite of cube rooting a number? It's to cube the number. What's the opposite of reciprocating? Well, that's an interesting one. If you take the number two and you reciprocate it, it becomes one over two. You're just exchanging the denominator and numerator. This is two over one. Two over one becomes one over two. To get this back to the original, you just reciprocate it again. So the opposite of reciprocating is to reciprocate. Right, which one would you wanna do first? Between these two, would you wanna cube that number first or would you rather root it? I definitely would rather root it to make it smaller. I don't know what 16 cubed is and I doubt you do too. Maybe some of you guys will. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to square root. Square rooting is the opposite of squaring. Now remember, when we get rid of that, it doesn't just disappear, in, I mean, in terms of like, there's just no number there. There is a number there, it's the number one. Because cube rooting means one over three. So once we've addressed that, we still have the negative. That cross just means one over three is now square root of 16 plus or minus four. You have to remember that if it's an even power, when you take a root of that, you're gonna get plus or minus. Now, we can do the opposite of this, which is to cube both sides. Or you could write power three if you want. X to the minus one now is plus or minus the cube of four. Four times four times four, four times four is 16, times another four, 64. Now, that means reciprocate. Remember what we just said, the inverse or the uh, opposite operation to the reciprocal is to reciprocate again. Reciprocate just means one over. So that goes x is plus or minus one over 64. Now you don't need to know what it looks like, but this x to the minus two thirds, it looks like this. What we've just shown is that when y is 16, just like a quadratic, you have two solutions. This one is plus one over 64, and this one here is minus one over 64. Yeah, that's what we have just shown. Right, how do we get to this tricky question? Something to the power of something is one. So we're thinking about our index rules and the number one. So what index rules involves powers and ending up with the number one? Well, the first one I know, case one, is anything to the power of zero is one. Okay, doesn't matter what this is, if that power is zero, then I will always get one. So my first case is setting that power to be zero. Now we can just straight solve that quadratic. 
So here we have 5 and 1. Yeah, multiplies to give you 5. How do you make plus 4? Because if you have plus 5 minus 1. So either x minus 1 is 0 or x plus 5 is 0. Something minus 1 is 0, that something is 1. Or something plus 5 is 0, that number is minus 5. Yeah, you're moving the numbers to the other side, they change sign. Now what's the second case? There's actually another one. Case 2. Here I said anything to the power of 0 is 1. But the other way we could have thought of it is 1 to the power of anything is 1. 1 to the power of anything is 1. Meaning, as long as the base number is 1, we're all good. So if I set the denominator 2x squared plus 9x minus 4 to equal 1 and rearrange, we can find the x values that fix it. So here that plus 1, let's move it to the other side by subtracting 1. So we are left with 2x squared plus 9x minus 4 minus 1 is minus 5 is 0. And here we need to factorize that using the oi oi method, bon ac. We ain't using any of that stuff anymore. So, what we're saying is, what multiplies to give you 2x squared? Well, 2 is a prime number, so it can only be 2x and x. What multiplies to give you 5? Five? 5 and 1. Then you've got to think, okay, where do I want to put the 1 and where do I want to put the 5? I'm trying to make 9, so for sure I'm going to put the 5 here and the 1 here. And this is where we do the oi oi method. 2x times 5 gives me 10x. And this gives me 1x. How does 10x and 1x make plus 9? Well, that's if we have a plus 10 minus 1. 10 minus 1 gives you 9, isn't it? So that needs to be plus, and this needs to be minus. So now, either 2x minus 1 is 0, or x plus 5 is 0. Interestingly, this gives me the same value, OK? So this is going to give me x is minus 5, which you already have as a solution. Here, we're going to move the minus 1 over, so we get 2x is 1. Then divide both sides by 2, and that goes. And there's your other solution, x is 1 half. So we have three solutions here. Half, 1, minus 5, to ensure that this will always equal 1. Very interesting question. Um, so yeah, guys, we've explored a lot here. I'd really appreciate if you hit the like button. If you learned something today, subscribe for more maths content. And if you're interested in my GCSE courses, there is details in the description. And feel free to join the Learn Gang Reddit page if you want to submit your own GCSE questions and get feedback from the community. The link to that is also in the description. I'll see you in the next video. Nice.